Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Pat, DeGrasse Daniels, and Erwin Stirr. Coming up on DTNS, it's Google I.O., and we have all the expected announcements and a few unexpected ones, too, plus a way to buy shoes online that fits. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, May 11th, 2022 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. In Salt Lake City, I'm Scott Johnson. I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. And joining us, tech journalist Nicole Lee is with us. Welcome back to the show, Nicole. Hello, happy to be here on this illustrious Googleist of days. Is that what the I in Google I.O. stands for? Illustrious? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. What's the O for then? <laughs> well, I, ostentatious? Yeah, illustrious <laughs> yeah, ostentation. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we'll illustrious. tell you what the, all those illustrious sure. ostentatious announcements are. <laughs> in a minute, but let's start with a few tech things you should know. Analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, who has an excellent track record on this sort of stuff, says that his sources say that Apple will replace its lightning port with USB-C on phones starting in 2023. So it wouldn't be the next phone, because that would be later this year, but the phone after that. Kuo indicated last year that Apple was not considering USB-C for iPhone. The existing lighting connector was introduced back in 2012, and Apple already supports USB-C on its most recent iPad. Please let this be true. Uh, Intel announced its 12th gen Alder Lake HX series CPUs, a mobile version of the Alder Lake S desktop CPUs, offering up to 16 cores on the Core 9 i9 12900HX, evenly split between performance and efficiency, uses 50 watts of power, allows for overclocking, supports PCIe 5.0, and to make room for the desktop size die, it only offers Z graphics with 32 GPU cores compared to 96 on Alder Lake H CPUs, and it also does not include an integrated Thunderbolt 4 connector. Control. Nikkei Asia's sources say that the chipmaker TSMC warned clients that it plans to raise prices for the second time in less than a year. Not a lot of people would be happy about that if they're doing business with with, uh, TSMC. The single-digit percentage hike would be effective at the start of 2023. TSMC cited inflation concerns, rising costs, and expansion plans for the increase. Yeah, it's that supply and demand curve. It gets you every time. Uh, The European Commission unveiled a plan that would require tech companies in Europe to scan platforms and products for child sex abuse material, or CSAM. While many platforms already do scan for hashed versions of known CSAM, this new plan would let EU countries require tech companies to seek out and report new CSAM, not just passively scan them. The plan requires approval of EU member states and the European Parliament, so it might be a while until a final version of the plan becomes effective. Twitter started rolling out a new copy, paste, and duplicate content policy to combat spam. Twitter will now treat identical or near identical content, as well as copy pasted tweets that disrupt the experience of others as a policy violation, meaning that it won't be recommended or show in search or trending topics. These tweets won't lead to content removals or account suspensions, just won't surface as often. Now, we had Dave Broadbeck on recently talking about the idea of using an algorithm to gauge emotions. In that case, it was in order to help teachers identify students that might need a little extra help, might need to look a little confused. But Protocol reported in April on Zoom's emotion AI being used for salespeople to gauge customer interest in their pitch. You know, am I losing them? Uh, the, the emotion AI will tell me. Uh, Wednesday, 25 organizations, including the ACLU, Electronic Privacy Information Center, and Fight for the Future, sent a letter asking Zoom to end its plans to incorporate emotion AI in its software. Uh, how you can detect what an emotion is is not settled science. It makes it difficult, since we don't have settled science on that, to be sure that you're training your algorithm accurately. And while it may be useful as an aid, as in the teaching example, the AI Now Institute says it should not be used in important decisions like hiring or grading students. And I guess these organizations think sales is an important part of that too. So you're not going to get it in Zoom if they have their way. We'll see what Zoom says about it. All right, let's talk about buying shoes. Let's do it. So buying clothing online in general, whether it's shoes or shirts or pants or whatever, it's taking a guess at the size that you think you might want and then maybe making a return to get the right one because 
it wasn't the size that you actually wanted because you didn't try it on in a department store type thing. Zappos famously started making returns for shoes pretty simple to encourage people to buy shoes from them because shoes have a 50, uh, 57% return rate. That's according to a study by Body Labs. Now, increasingly, companies are using some kind of algorithm, or at least trying to, and scanning you to help you pick the right size to make, sh- make it as frictionless as possible. A South Korean company called Perfit, uh. Perfit with two T's, is one of the latest companies. Here's how this system works. Sends you a paper kit with calibrations printed on that paper. You put your feet on the paper, take a picture in the Perfit app, that gets at least some somewhat of an accurate length, width of the ball of your foot, height of the top of your foot, you know, if you have an arch type thing. Uh, Perfoot has uh, trained an algorithm on 140,000 shoe sizes across 20,000 shoes, such as New Balance and Adidas. I mean, big brands. It can take your picture and match it to a proper fitting shoe, and it claims 92% success rate in general. Yeah, 90.2% of the people who used it were satisfied that they got the right fit. So that's pretty good. Uh, I <laughs> I did not know the term bracketing until I read this Tech in Asia story. That, I knew the practice, which is you buy three pairs of shoes at different sizes so that you're sure you get at least one that fits and then you send the other two back. Mm-hmm. Uh, you wouldn't have to bracket anymore if perfect ends up working. And I know this isn't the first company to try this, but I, I, I find all of these fascinating. It's that we haven't yet cracked the code on being able to use technology to accurately buy clothes that fit, not just online, but even in the store where it could be like, oh, you need this size because why are sizes all different? You go into different stores and you, the small means something different in Nordstrom than it does in Bloomingdale's, et cetera. Often the, the same rack has the same problem. I have this this issue with shoes and I've had to quote unquote bracket before, although I didn't know it had a name, but I've had to, when I've bought shoes online, a certain kind of running shoe fits me. And I never know if it's going to unless I try it. So I'll order two, three pair. And sure enough, one of them is the right one. And the other two that I thought might have been the right ones are not the right ones. So and people like me are probably going to use this. And um, that stuff hopefully will get better and better because there's still a few things about our internet shopping life that are hindered a bit by the old ways of sit down and put a thong- thing on your foot and have a guy make sure it's right and go back and pull it off a shelf. And, you know, that's that's not here. So seeing them come up with ways to sort of creatively handle this problem is, is pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, even, you know, I, I have, I, I'm a pretty small person and I have small feet and shoes in particular have always been difficult for me to buy online because, you know, I'm like, I know I'm a six, but I might be a 5.5 or even depends, maybe a 6.5. Yeah. It just, you know, it just depends. And, you know, all the sizing charts that all of the companies have on their websites, you know, I always look at them and it kind of always says the same thing. Like, you know, if you're, you know, if you're this size in a shirt, you probably would be this size in a pant type thing. And it's mm-hmm. somewhat helpful, but it is, <laughs> speaking of not having a perfect science, it's definitely not that. This is, you know, it's getting us closer and closer to getting what you want without having to then return the things that you spot that you didn't end up wanting, which is tedious. Yeah. I think that's also the case of like, <clears throat> if you have one foot slightly smaller than the other mm. and you never, you, and you're sort of in between sizes. I think there's a company called Adams where they, they sell like quarter size shoes to sort of like, you can wow. buy like specifically for your left foot versus your right foot. Oh, that's called great. Adams. Yeah. Um, but again, like, you know, you have to kind of like do the bracketing thing to make sure it fits because <laughs> even 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 this company that, that does cater to that the different the quarter size shoe they encourage bracketing so yeah. even you know it's kinda... i i want this technology in the shoe store i'm going to go buy some running yeah. shoes i always go into rei and i buy them uh you know and 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 i always have to wait when they do bracketing i didn't know what it was called but they bring me three different pairs and i have to try yeah. on usually at least two if not all right, three before yes. I figure out which in one store right. the, the yeah. experience specifically with shoes it has always been that way, you know, where you kind of go like, oh, okay, no, nah, this one's actually better. Also, we can, we have a standard way of measuring. We have two standard ways, you have the Imperial and then the metric system, but we, there are standards. Why can't the size fit the standards? Like just 
Right, because there's U.S. size, U.K. size. Be the size. centimeters all... <laughs> that my foot is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, well, do you want us to not talk about shoes so much? Do you want us to talk about shoes more? Let us know. One way to let us know is our subreddit. You can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Google I.O. kicked off uh, with people in the crowd for the first time in a few years. And let's get right to what they talked about, because they talked about a lot. It was a two-hour announcement. Uh, we'll start with the Pixel 6a. It's a 6.1-inch phone with a dual rear camera. Basically, it's the Pixel 6, but a little smaller, and a 12-megapixel main and ultra-wide camera, not the big 51. But it's got the Titan M2. It's got a millimeter wave 5G modem. Uh, it's got the Tensor Sock, the exact same one that's in the 6. Uh, the camera can even do a lot of the things the 6 can. Magic Eraser, Night Sight, Real Tone. That's all because it's done on the Tensor Sock. Uh, it has Live Translate, an under-display fingerprint sensor, five years of security updates, not full updates, but security updates, which are the more important of the two if you had to choose. And you can pre-order it starting July 21st in stores July 28th for $449. Nicole, are you excited? I mean, this is the the mid range line of the Pixel phones, right? So it's so it's so it's it's good because um, compared to previous uh, iterations of uh, Google's like sort of mid range line, this is a much more powerful version. So it brings up the affordable line, the, the sort of the A line of phones, almost to par with the 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 more expensive flagship style phones. So. Google Tensor chip on a on a mid range phone on for only good. like I think four seventy or something like that. That's a really good deal. That's actually a very good deal. Yeah, the pricing yeah. seems really good. I'm you know I always have these Android friends that are so stoked for new Pixel announcements, and they're always telling me, Scott, this is your chance. This is the time to hop in because the Pixel phones are the best phones on the planet, and here are all the reasons why. I have to admit, today's presentation about the six A was a was a good one for me. But then when you do a seven preview, I go, oh, well, then we're going to call me when the seven's out. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That's, it seems like a dangerous well, that, thing to do. That in a was a weird thing to do. First of all, the Pixel 6a can be as good as the Pixel 6 because, frankly, the Pixel 6 wasn't as big of an advance over the right. 5. Uh, right. So, you know, that's a little easier to do. But then you immediately tell us, like, oh, by the way, this fall, don't buy the 6 or the 6a. We've got the 7 coming. Uh, yeah, it'll why have didn't an they call it the 7a bar. and say 7a first? And then no, because the, the 7A seven A comes out next. later. They, that's their, their. They always put out the number, that's and the then next. they put it just out seems the, backwards. backwards. No, no, that, that's the <laughs> normal. Backwards. That's the normal pattern. You 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 do the you do the six. You do the the main one, and then the A. The A is the is like the sub brand. Well, yeah, but then all of you are saying, well, who wants the six A when all we want is the seven? Yeah, it's why announce bigger. another one is the thing. I, I think they're trying to get ahead of the rumors by showing it to <laughs> us before it leaks on Android Authority or somewhere. But yeah, uh, I it was, a, it was an odd choice. On the other hand, I guess for people who are like, okay, well, I know the Pixel 7 is coming, but that 6A is a great price. I'll just go with it now because I know the 7 will be a lot more expensive, which it will. Yeah, and, so, and yeah. to Sarah's point, I think the idea that, you know, if you come out with a phone and say, Here's our flagship phone. It's got all the huge features. And here's the slightly lesser one that's going to cost you less money. Those usually have the same number. And had this been, here's our 6A, or here's our 7, and also here's our 7A. That would have been a whole different feeling for me because I would have said, oh, okay, well, now I have a choice. and I Yeah, can, I instead can of pick. saying, oh, well, I'm just going to buy a phone that's going to be yeah. seem sort of old and not that cool I guess in on the, a short on the amount of time. Hand, though, we all know there's a Pixel 7 coming this autumn, even if That's they hadn't true. said it. It's That's not true. like... Yeah. It's not yeah. like a shock that they're going to come out with a new, new phone. That's a, that's a really year, good point. So, I think yeah. we're mostly just like, man, what's with marketing and tech companies these days? Some of their stuff just... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of marketing, uh, <laughs> if you're interested in a new set of earbuds, we've got the Pixel Buds Pro with active noise cancellation. This is the first in Pixel Buds, so that's going to make some people happy. Also has new six-core audio chip with neural processing engine inside, and that con uh, helps con uh, compensate for audio leakage around seal. So mm. I don't know if you're around a bunch of people, you're not necessarily going to be leaking your audio out to everybody around you. Um, there's also a transparency mode. Uh, there are beam framing noise suppression mics, 11 hours listening or seven hours with ANC. So pretty good specs good. there. Yeah. yeah. 
uh, multi-point connectivity, spatial audio coming later this year in an update, says Google. Uh, find my device, can find each earbud if you happen to lose one in your couch, which that would be me. And uh, we will have four co colors pre-order available on July 21st in store and July 28th online for $299. I want a pair of these. Um, it's weird that I really like their earbuds in this presentation. I don't you know like why. They I, look like why is it weird? I don't know. I guess I was going in <laughs> thinking everybody wants to do earbuds right now. Every major company, Samsung, Apple, everybody's got yeah. their own version of this. Yeah. And they do these little incremental changes or tweaks to them to make them more attractive to, to buyers. Um, and so I'm kind of done with all that stuff. I'm just sort of like, whatever. Let me know when a major innovation happens. I really like how these look. But yeah, that was going to say, <laughs> these are not a major innovation. They're just, they're just on par with yeah what, they're yeah. just on par with, they're on par with all the rest yeah they just look cool and they get a little g in them and the colors are nice and... <laughs> i don't know I'm well just sort, of, sort of blown away by them for no reason well if you're interested in the pixel lion uh, scott we also have the pixel watch has a circular design tap to pay with google wallet also voice activation kind of you know standard stuff for smart watches but uh this is this is new also fitbit integration i was very curious yeah. about this how that was going to work especially because you can still buy standalone fitbit smart watches uh which i have used in the past four years so that has heart rate sleep tracking workout stats that's all going to be part of the pixel watch as well that's coming this autumn along with the pixel 7. This so advance you can't buy it now, but you can buy it soon. This advance announcement made more sense to me, which is like, hey, you all have been yeah. hearing about the Pixel Watch. Here's what it looks like. More details coming this fall. Get excited. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think out of all the announcements today, this is probably one of the my top, uh, like the thing that I was excited about because I was like, oh, finally Google is something doing something with Fitbit. Finally, they're finally doing something with this IP that they bought like you know years ago. Twenty nineteen. Into getting yeah. it, and it looks it looks good. The design looks good, like a nice round design and beautiful looking watch. Yeah, it's beautiful looking, and you know, if anything is might pry me away from my Apple Watch, this could be it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, like Fitbit sort of been waiting rad. for this, right? Waiting for. I always liked the round design, and every time yeah, they show exactly. a, an Android-based device that was round, I mean, like, now that's the direction I would like everybody to go, including Apple, yeah. and they never seem yeah. to. So the fact that this is, you know, and now it's got the Pixel name. I don't know, man. I think maybe there's some finally some little watch war going to happen. And the I'm only excited. thing I don't like about the watch is they're tied to the phones, right? They yeah. kind of work with the opposite phone, but you can't they use an Apple Watch easily with, with Android. OS. You can't yeah. easily use Wear with iOS. I'd yeah. like to have the freedom to mix and match. Yeah, yeah. same. That's fair. Uh, before we get into some Android news, uh, the Pixel tablet uh, with a Tensor chip is coming in 2023. Um, that was they didn't spend a whole lot of time on yeah, that. Yeah, they're like, um, Here, here's a tablet. Here's a picture of a thing that looks like a tablet. <laughs> right. Like, oh, yeah, that sure does. Right, like, right. okay, you're working on tablets, good. Uh, and the company also announced- I kept waiting to say it would fold or do something, but yeah, it's just a nice looking tablet. It's a nice tablet. <laughs> <laughs> Google also announced a new Google store is coming to Williamsburg, New York. Yes. That's in Brooklyn, if you're not familiar. So Google is clearly taking over the five boroughs. The land of hipster strollers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Android 13. Let's get to the meat of this announcement. This was the, the thing that most people knew was coming and were, were waiting for. Not a ton of surprising things here. Uh, a new music player that themes itself to what you're playing. That's kind of nifty. The fact that you can set languages per app so that if you speak multiple languages uh, and you maybe you social network in Spanish, uh, but but you message in English or vice versa, you can, you can do that. Uh, RCS is getting end-to-end -end encryption for group chats later this year through Android 13. Uh, the triumphant return once again of Google Wallet. I think this is the third iteration of Google Wallet, uh, but this one uh, will work. It got work. a lot of applause. Yeah, because people as if are like- they were announcing it for the first time. Yeah, finally, you're doing it right. Uh, student IDs, Walt Disney World, <laughs> passes 
uh, everything on device, nothing shared with Google. Digital driver's license support was a big applause line as well. That will work with NFC or QR codes. You do not need to hand over your phone to use it. Uh, the Android earthquake alert system uses your accelerometer. Uh, that's expanding its usage. And the Android 13 beta is out now. So uh, if you're if you're a developer, you can you can get in there and start playing around with it. Uh, also, Wear OS is getting emergency SOS. So if you fall, it can automatically send an emergency for you. Android 12L, which is the laptop uh, version, is got bigger elements now. Side by side apps and drag and drop. Uh, 20 Google apps, more than 20 Google apps, getting tablet updates. Lots of side by side windowing. So it seemed like this is also going to be useful for foldables. Uh, which they do provide this for Samsung to use for their foldables, but maybe Google's doing their own. Uh, and casting, coming to Chromebooks and Android Auto. Uh, this fall, Phone Hub will extend your apps to Chromebook. Uh, so you could do a thing like copy on your Android phone, paste it on a tablet. FastPair uh, already works with uh, phone and laptop and TV. It's coming to headphones and other devices. And of course, they teased Matter coming later this autumn. Uh, Nest hardware will, of course, be Matter compliant, which makes it work with a lot of stuff uh, that will also be in the Matter ecosystem. Pretty cool. Uh, cool. You were talking earlier about walking around with a with a Nest, not tablet, but a Nest device and having a little more mobility with your, you know, we, we control it with our phones and our tablets and stuff, but I don't know. I'd like the idea of Nest being a little more of its own thing. And let me just like go in the basement with it and look at the, look at my weird heater while I'm looking at my screen going, okay, what's going on down here and being a little more well, that's the, that's the uh, Nest Hub Max. We'll we'll get to some of the Google Assistant related to that, but yeah, the, yeah. The, there was some there's some thinking that they might have introduced a new Nest Hub with a detachable tablet. They didn't do that, so we didn't see yeah. that. It does look a lot like a Nest um, user interface, though. The, yeah, the very actual, much like the that. tablet you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'll be honest. The Android operating system announcements were fine. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, I'm not like jumping yeah. up and down, but I'm not disappointed. It's like good, good, solid <laughs> updates there. Yeah, and to their credit, everybody who does updates like this on their OSs, this is all very incremental these days. No one's no one's blowing anyone's socks off with OS updates. It feels like so. Yeah, it's all good. Well, when it comes to Google, people often think about privacy. Oh, how much? How much is it collecting from me? Uh, a new, a new uh, feature called My Ad Center can help you, at least on some level, control the ads that you see. So if you say, I'm interested in one, uh, or, or I'm interested in these categories of ads and not these categories of ads, you have a little bit more leeway there. Or brand search results uh, with your phone number, your home address, or your email address can be removed from Google search. Now, this is not something that's happening today. The company says it's happening in the coming months, but I know some people will be happy about that to just have a little bit more control over when you get searched for, whether you're a person or a brand, uh, here's what other people are gonna see. We also get some expanded context on websites in the Google apps. This is a, b a brilliant piece of jujitsu. Uh, we would <laughs> like you to tell us how to target you better. So tell us which categories <laughs> you would like more or fewer ads because for. Because you're in control. Because you're <laughs> yeah. in control, but you can't eliminate a category, just more or fewer. Uh, and brands, brands that we work with anyway, not all brands, but, you know, brands that we have contract with. I mean, I'm not saying these things are bad, but just, you know, let's, let's be honest about yeah, what's like, going on keep, here. Keep yeah. the context, you know, top of yeah. mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, it's unfortunate that they, that they, uh, this is the thing that annoyed me the most, because I kind of just wish they were a little bit more just open about it. We know what you do, Google, and we know that this is a huge part of what you do to make money. And so, okay, so embrace it and then tell us how you're going to make it maybe easier for us to control more of that and, you know, don't dance around it. Just yeah. you are who you are, and it's fine. But but it is it is improving your ad experience. It's not really giving you control. No, not that's, at all. That's no. Yeah. yeah. That's and, and the also, whole idea, though. The idea of improving your ad experience is also just such a weird term. Yeah. Because well, some people I do know like ads the is idea want, of but. saying, "Hey, I'm getting ads for I I don't know blouses that I would never buy. Can I can I get fewer of those? That would yeah. be nice. To, and that makes sense. That's a sure. real sure. thing that has happened yeah, yeah. to me. Where I'm like, why am I? <laughs> I think it's like I bought a Mother's Day gift, and then it was like, oh, you're oh yeah, right, for right. the next yeah. five years, like, right. do you want more yeah. blouses? Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, the security side of this is always really good at Google. I, I am a big fan of their security. Uh, phishing protection is going to get built into Doc Sheets and Slides. 
So if you get uh, some links uh, sneaked into a doc or maybe a, a, an iffy doc that you opened up by mistake and you try to click on something, it'll be able to tell you like, this link doesn't look good. We're gonna keep you away from it. Uh, Chrome and Android are getting virtual credit cards. That means you can pay with a distinct virtual card number instead of your actual card number, like a one-time use card number. That'll work across Visa, American Express, Capital One, and MasterCard coming this summer. Uh, and they outlined a new system called Protected Computing, uh, where they commit to collect less personal data, delete more of it, de-identify the data they do have by either blurring things or adding noise to the data, restrict access through encryption and secure enclaves, uh, still while being able to do things like predictive text, predictive wake of your phone, uh, detect compromised passwords without knowing your password, just by keeping your data on device and only treating the data it needs for the purpose it's doing and then forgetting about it, not having to store stuff. Yeah, it seems good. seems like, um, I don't know, I use... <laughs> I was surprised the other day how much I use Google for security stuff because in my head, I'm like, well, I'm just using whatever my phone does. I'm usually on an iPhone, but I use so much Google security um, for what I do, including two-factor authentication kind of across the board. I use their app for everything. Yeah. So anytime they're updating that stuff, I'm, I'm happy to hear. And they did talk about the Fido thing where you'll be able to just tap on your phone to log in. Yeah. Uh, that's mm -hmm. coming to, to Apple and Microsoft stuff as well. Right. I was pretty excited about Google Assistant updates uh, and then S Tab Max specifically. Uh, the idea that you can look at it and talk to it. Now, in the demo, it was clear that you have to be pretty close to the device, right? I mean, it can't just like track your eye movements from, you know, across the house type thing. It mm -hmm. felt but, like uh, face unlock where you had to kind of look at it and be like, okay, yeah, you can see me. yeah, but yeah, at, yeah. But at the same time, I mean, I am, I'm in the Amazon ecosystem, you know, of sort of smart home, all the things. I do a lot of talking to my devices and it isn't very natural. I got used to it because that's <laughs> the only option that I've had. But being mm -hmm. able to use eye contact to trigger something instead of using a wake word, and that's on device, by the way. So for anybody who's like, ooh, you know, I, I don't I don't want them looking at my eyes and uploading my eyes, you know, to the cloud. <laughs> you, you, it's actually, it's actually, you know, it, you know, you've got a variety of quick phrases um that can help you uh trigger alarms or you know lights yeah without having to use the wake timing. you, you could, it yeah, just yeah. knows like oh if you're saying turn off the lights then that must mean you want that off you exactly yeah. uh google also you know they 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 leaned into natural language processing improvements uh that would handle things like me saying tom can you um <clears throat> um <clears throat> Turn on the lights, type thing. You as a human know what I mean. I would say spit it out, Sarah. Whereas now Google Assistant well, will uh, go politely wait for you to finish your time. Well, yeah. I mean, in the past, you'd be like, oh, I can't say it that way because it's not going to work. So right, Google is right. saying, we're trying to make it easier for you to just be a human that is talking to another human, even though you're talking <laughs> to a machine. This happens you. all the time with us. Like whenever we, we're asking the Google Assistant to, like, hey, what's this? What's the score for the. San Francisco uh, did uh, which, which one? Right. Yeah, and and then and then the, it just messes up. It doesn't know what to do. Like what? Yeah, <laughs> it usually sorry, plays music. Say that again. Yeah, it'll play music or something for me sometimes. Yeah, exactly. I'm asking for songs. No, no. That is it. That's an area I really. I hope all these assistants continue to, to innovate in because, you know, we want to get to the point where it's very Star Trek computer relationship. We just say what we want to say in the way we say it with whatever stammer, stutter, or uh, in between words or whatever forgetfulness and have these things smart enough to even maybe help us with what we forgot oh yeah. do you mean the do you mean the uh, you know the giants san francisco giants is that who you mean yes that's what i meant okay cool well the score is this like we'll yeah, get exactly. there i really feel like we will but yeah baby steps. and we are i mean this is yeah. incremental but yeah it it, it gives me hope yeah <laughs> that... the look and talk as as clunky as it is now will get better uh and if it can be really good at knowing when you're looking at it to talk that's that's a heck of an improvement that that gets it close to ambient computing where it just knows where it can interpret the and it can the, it can also do follow-up so like oh can you tell me more about this first result versus the, the second result or whatever yeah, yeah. it is so 
Yeah. Now, of course, Google search always gets a little bit of time at Google I.O. Uh, the, the new phrase for Google search is uh, any way and anywhere. Search reimagined. Mm -hmm. wow. uh, they, they expanded multi-search. <laughs> multi-search is that thing where you can do a photo and a question about it. Like, do you have this in blue? Uh, they're going to add near me. Uh, so you show a photo. They use Japche as the example. Japche near me, and it'd show you restaurants that have Japche. Uh, scene exploration is a thing coming that can view a number of objects. They used a, a, a grocery store counter full of chocolate bars, uh, and you could say, find all the dark chocolate without nuts that are highly rated, and it would be able to use image recognition to not only know which chocolate bars are which, but then use its search database to figure out which ones fit your criteria. Mm -hmm. uh, and they also partnered with Dr. Ellis Monk uh, on the Monk skin tone scale, something that Dr. Monk uh, developed. They are going to adapt to use in their products like Real Tone, the, the filter for photos, uh, but they're also gonna use it in image search uh, and open source it. So if you would like to use this scale, which they feel is more accurate for skin tones, uh, you can put it in your product. Just go to skintone.google. Well, um, as far as augmented reality, uh, Google teased glasses that can show real-time translation, ASL as well. Uh, that's American Sign Language. Um, not coming anytime soon, at least not on the uh, immediate roadmap, but still cool nonetheless. Is this, I mean, we essentially know this. Uh, this is Google Glass, uh, you know, the eventual outcome of that, perhaps. Maybe this is finally the product that Enter gets in Enterprise Google sense. Glass is the eventual outcome of Google Glass, but this is certainly an offshoot of it, right? Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. The thing we all saw everybody wearing and we went, man, that'd be great to have all this heads up display information. And we look a little goofy in public, but boy, we'll get used to it. We were all excited to talk about how we were going to get used to these to these glasses. I feel like now's the time. So well, I'm, I'm actually was... really excited about this. Google Glass was ahead of its time. Yeah. You know, we talk mm -hmm. about technology where people are like, eh. I don't know. <laughs> Are we ready yeah. for this? And I feel like Google Glass was a good example of that. But lots of other companies are working on AR glasses. Yeah. Google certainly would like to have a consumer product think, that makes right. more sense. Mm -hmm. I think the 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 power and the advantage that this particular version has, at least from what it looks like on the brief demo, one two things. One, it looks like regular glasses, right? Yeah. Nothing crazy or kooky about it. It's a regular pair of glasses. Number two is very important. There are it doesn't seem to have a camera and the no camera thing i think is huge because that was one of the biggest complaints about mm -hmm. google glass i think similar glasses of the similar style was that the whole camera thing the privacy you know invasion that kind of thing if it doesn't have a camera that com that instantly removes that concern right i mean there's also the microphone thing which i understand that that also that's also a concern but the main concern that most people have is that oh this this camera i don't know i don't know if it's on but if there's no camera that instantly makes it way more attractive i think for people like me who really just wants a normal pair of glasses that doesn't look like i'm you know recording everything mm -hmm. um and the fact that it shows like the translation and uh the real the real time translation i mean that's great yeah i want to see how it really works versus yeah. this this sort of stylized <laughs> image it seemed like the people were actually using it uh, unless they were actors, uh, but but I want to I want to see how it looks in the glasses itself because because yeah. they were just showing it superimposed outside the glasses. It's and probably I'm like, like yeah, a small that looks window, really cool. I bet. Yeah. I bet it's like a small window. And this is there. definitely this is their concept. They always have one concept yeah. thing. Uh, Google Duplex was the famous one years ago. So uh, this is the one this year, and I, I hope we get to see it in a, in a couple of years. Yep. Anything else uh, on this before we wrap this up that, that you liked? Uh, there was stuff about maps and Translate and YouTube and Workspace. Any, any, anything else anybody wanted to mention? Nicole, we'll start with you. Um, I really like the AI test kitchen. So um, that's the one where like you can say, um, I'm at the deepest part of the ocean. And uh, as a response to the app's prompt of imagine if. So that, and then, then the app will spit out a short paragraph of, describing the user in a submarine in the Marina's Trench or something. So I, I, I like the idea of like breaking down a complex goal or topic with this AI like test app. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the whole idea of like trying to make, you know, the whole Google system a lot more intelligent by using this test app. Interesting. Well, I, there, there's lots of ethical problems. We talked about the fact that even though um, 
oftentimes facial recognition or bias uh, in, in data sets gets the most attention. There's lots of ethical issues with AI. And yeah. one good way to catch them is to use better data sets. And, and I, I, I know and hope that Google continues to do that. But this is another way to catch stuff uh, is yeah. to put it in front of people. I think that's smart. Yeah. So, uh, Sarah, Scott, you guys have anything else? Um, well, for me, I... I, they Besides didn't, the fact that it was a very long event, it was a pretty oh, long event. Yeah. Two hours. <laughs> they ended right on time, though. Like right. I, on I was time. shocked. I thought they were going to go three hours at one no. point. Yeah, I felt like they yeah. weren't. They weren't done when they finished. But for me, they didn't bring it up. But I would have loved some discussion about creators and that new tablet. Um, you know, I realize yeah. this is a, a kind of a me thing, but the iPad Pro and things like Procreate and Photoshop products and the pencil have become this de facto new standard for a lot of digital artists, myself included. And I really would have liked to have heard at least a nod in that direction to say, mm -hmm. we're working with third parties or we have a pen in the works or, or something about how perhaps the pixel tablet might be, you know, might chip a little cheese off of Apple's block a little bit. Cause right now yeah. they kind of own that space. And I would, I would love to have heard something about that. So it's not really something I heard him maybe say. Maybe you still will. They, maybe, they spent yeah. so little time on that tablet. So You're right. It's it's way early in that process. It looked nice. Um, I really like the Pixel hardware. So it got me kind of excited. But, you know, time will tell on that. Well, thanks to both Scott Johnson and Nicole Lee for being with us on a fun announcement day. Gotta love Devo Days. Uh, Scott, we'll start with you. Where can folks keep up with your work? Well, you uh, you heard me mention video games here and there, or uh, maybe we didn't. But like today, we didn't hear about Stadia at all. If you want to hear about why I think we didn't hear about Stadia and a whole bunch of other big video game industry news type stuff, check out the podcast Core. It airs on Thursday nights uh, live, and of course, to the podcast right after that, wherever you get your shows, just look for Core. It's Core Gaming for Core Gamers, and we have a really good time on there. I think you might enjoy it if you're into gaming at all. So once again, that is frogpants.com slash core or wherever you get your shows. And Nicole Lee, so good to have you back on the show. Let folks know where, where you're hanging out these days, where they can keep up with your work. Yeah, so for right now, you can just go to Twitter, twitter.com slash Nicole. Um, I'm looking for work. So, uh, you know, if you have, uh, if, you, if you hear of any openings for a good, knowledgeable, experienced tech which, journalist. Which you very much are. <laughs> um, have them reach out. So uh, thank you. <laughs> that would be very helpful for me. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, good. It's so good to have you both on the show. Couldn't have done it without you. Also, we want to thank two new bosses. We got LaBelle V and we have Eric. They both just started backing us on Patreon. Oh, Thanks, you, LaBelle Eric. V. And I thank you, you, Eric. Also known as Batty Okay. There's a longer version of the show called Good Day Internet that rolls right after we wrap this show. That's available at patreon.com slash DTNS. Just a reminder, we are live. If you can join us, please do. Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. And we're back doing it all again because we do it every Thursday with Justin Robert Young. Talk to you then. Show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>